Vector images, bitmap images, what's the difference and why should you care? Coming up next. Good Mark TV morning. I got a message from a Lori Denver in Madison, Wisconsin, who wants to know what's the difference between a vector image and a bitmap image. It seems that Lori is working with some, I don't know, sign people or something, and they're asking for her to send them her logo as a vector image, and she doesn't really know what that means. So today, I'm going to explain to you the difference between a vector image and a bitmap image, and more importantly, why you should care. And Lori, because we're using your question in today's episode, I'm gonna be sending you your very own Mark TV baseball cap. Now, let's get started. All right, so to illustrate, let's start by looking at these two photos, both of which are images of women with shopping bags. Now, the first one, as you can see, is a true life photo, and the other one appears to be an illustration. Now let's start with the real life photo. This was taken with a standard camera or perhaps even like a smartphone. And basically the way it works is the camera or the smartphone, whatever you're using, takes whatever the lens sees, brings it into the camera, processes it, and creates an image like this. The greater the megapixels of your camera, the more information it can take in and the more dots it uses to make the photo. The more dots in the photo, the greater the resolution, the sharper the image, and you have a greater ability to increase the size of the image and still have it look good. Let me illustrate. Let's zoom in on this picture. I mean, really zoom in. Let's zoom in on our eye specifically. All right, we're gonna keep zooming in more and more. There you go. Now, at this point, you really can't tell that it's her eye, but what you will notice is that there's a ton of little tiny dots and all of these dots are kind of overlapped and put together to create the image. And when you zoom back out, you can't really see the individual dots, but you can see the image that they all make up together. Now let's take a look at the vector image of the woman holding the shopping bags. Now as you can see, it's not a true life photograph, and well, that's one of the big differences between vector and bitmap, is that vector images are all, well, I guess hand-drawn, for lack of a better term, using a computer program like Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. They're done on the computer, and they'll never look like true life photographs. I mean, they can look pretty close depending on the skill level of the artist, but generally speaking, vector images will always have kind of that, that cartoon look to them. But here's something really cool about vector images. If we zoom in, on one of the eyes of this photo, you'll see we zoom in, zoom in even more, yeah, there we go. You can see that the edges remain crisp, unlike the other photo where they're all kind of grainy and they look like little squares and we couldn't tell one shape from another. Here you can see that all the edges are crisp. They maintain that, that resolution, that clarity, no matter how big or how small. So, essentially, we could take this image and blow it up to the size of a building or as small as a postage stamp and it would look just as crisp and clear at any size. Now, there are different file formats for bitmaps and vector images. Bitmap images can be TIFFs, JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, a number of different formats and all of them are unique, whether it's for print or web or whatever. Vector images are generally Adobe Illustrator files Corel Draw files, or EPS, which stands for Encapsulated Postscript. Now, not all of these images can be opened in any program, unlike GIFs or JPEGs that can be viewed in almost anything. So my advice to you is this. If you're going to have a logo designed for you, it is important that the designer provide you with not only vector images that you can share, but as well bitmap images for your own use. Because if they provide you your logo only as an Illustrator or EPS file, you may not be able to use it depending on what software you have. But if they give it to you as a PNG, a GIF, or a TIFF file, well then you can put it into your own documents, you can put it into your own website, you can kind of use it as you need. And yeah, the uses will be limited, but for most people, that'll be totally fine. But at least you'll have that vector image that you can share with other professionals who want to create something really cool for you with your logo. So I hope this clarifies the difference between bitmap and vector, and more importantly, why it's important for you to know the difference and to know what to ask for when someone's doing design work for you. 
Now, if you have any other questions, post them down below. You know I'll answer back. And like Lori, if we use your idea for a show, I'm going to send you a Mark TV baseball cap of your very own. I mean, who wouldn't want that? So until next time, I'm Mark Gordon, and you've been watching Mark TV. Hey, it's me again. Do yourself and the world a favor and subscribe to Mark TV. If you're watching this video on Facebook or LinkedIn, head over to marktv.net and be sure to click subscribe to be notified of new Mark TV episodes as they go live. And of course, I love your feedback. You can comment on LinkedIn, on Facebook, doesn't matter. Your message will get to me and I'll respond accordingly. So until next time, well, head over to Mark TV and check out some other episodes after you've clicked subscribe, of course.